To meet the needs of the growing Shia community, Imam Sadiq had established a networking organization of his trusted companions as his representatives in various cities around the Islamic territory. Imam Qadim took advantage of this organization effectively during his imamate. He began by proving himself as the next imam for the representatives who had traveled to Medina to transfer the Muslims' charity dues and asking their Islamic questions from him. At the time, the Abbasid spies were intensely monitoring the Imam's activities, and there were serious life threats for him. The Imam could not be the center for the communication with his Shia followers. The Abbasid rulers were particularly in great fear for allowing the transfer of the Muslims' charity dues to the Imam in Medina, as they thought this could facilitate the Imam's potential for an uprisal against them. Thus, the Imam expanded this organization as an effective method of leading the Shia community. The Imam would guide his representatives on how to spend the Muslim charity dues and would respond to their questions by letter. The Imam had also advised his representatives to avoid meeting him directly in Medina, but instead contact his chosen representative in Medina, Mufazal ibn Umar. Overall, many aspects of this organization have not been recorded in history due to the hidden nature of this organization. At the time of Harun, there was an excessive pressure and surveillance on Imam Qadam and his Shia followers by the government. The Imam had introduced the Abbasids as an impressive government and had given strict advice to his followers to avoid any relationship with them. The Imam did not even allow simple business deals with the government. In one incident, the Imam confronted one of his companions who had rented his camels to Harun for traveling to Mecca to perform Hajj. The Imam told him, by this rental, you will be waiting for Harun to return safely from his travel to pay you off for your rental wage and return your camel. The Imam then said that anyone who expects them to be alive or from them and their eternal place in hereafter is in hellfire along with them. By this strict advice, the Imam's companion sold all of his camels to avoid getting in business with the government. Despite the general order of the Imam to boycott any relationship with the oppressive Abbasid government, the Imam allowed for involvement in some sensitive positions in the government by his pious companions. This was one of the Imam's important strategies in leading the Shia community. The Imam's intentions for this exception was to save the wealth and lives of his Shia followers from persecution and oppression of the government. One of these pious companions of the Imam was Ali ibn Yaktin. He became close to the government due to his father's loyalty and status to the Abbasid government. However, Ali ibn Yaktin was different as compared to his father. He was a loyal companion of the Imam. With the Imam's approval, Ali ibn Yaktin held a high-ranking position in the Abbasid's government, including Harun's government. Ali ibn Yaktin wanted to resign from his position on multiple occasions. However, the Imam asked him to stay in his position, and he obeyed. The Imam had guaranteed him that he will not be killed with the sword of the enemy or be jailed, and he will not become poor. The Imam in return asked him to respect any of his Shia followers who came to him in the government. Ali ibn Yaktin used his position to help the Shias and save their lives and wealth from the oppression of the Abbasids. For example, he would secretively return illegitimate taxes that the government was taking forcefully from the Shias. He would also send his Islamic obligatory dues to the Imam in Medina or spend it according to the Imam's guidance. For example, he was donating a large amount of money by sending a few hundreds of Shias to Hajj annually and would pay a large allowance for each of them. The Imam in return saved him on various occasions from the conspiracies and the plots of the Abbasids against him. The Imam would meet his representatives outside Medina, return his valuable gift back to him, or send him specific instruction on performing his religious ritual to save him from the Abbasids, who would become suspicious of him from time to time. <laughs> 